Tonight the sky is clear and outside it is the kind of cold that only winter can bring. Winter, the time when stories may be told, the time when stories must be told. The story we are about to hear is one of the most sacred stories told by the Crow people. Listen now to a tale of magical twins who held great powers of some of their adventures, of the healing powers of the sweat lodge, and how the brothers conquered an evil being whose hand we can see in the winter night sky. Long ago, it was the custom for newly married couples to go out a ways and hunt antelope, deer, and other kinds of animals. In this way, they were able to enjoy the meat of the season. And so it was with a certain young man and his wife who was with child. He spent the days hunting and she went about the work of the lodge. One day, the man returned home to find that his wife was dead and the child she carried was missing. The man built a funeral scaffold, placed his wife's body upon it, and for a long time he wept and grieved the loss of his dear wife and child. A few years passed, and they say that the man was inside his lodge, preparing food, when he heard a sound. He looked up, saw nothing, but he heard a child's voice. Father, will you give me something to eat? The man said, come out and show yourself. And out from behind the teepee lining appeared a little boy. The man gave food to the child, and after that, the little boy stayed with the man. The man was pleased to have a son. The boy played around the camp, while the man went out to hunt each day. This went on for a while. One day when the boy was playing outside, he saw another boy just his age. The new boy had risen out of a nearby spring. The two boys played all day, but when they heard the father returning home, the boy from the spring was frightened and ran back to the spring. The next day when the father left to hunt, the boy from the spring returned and the two new friends played each day after that. The father had come to love the boy who appeared from behind the lining and often made small toys and carvings for him. In time, he made a set of arrows and gave them to the boy. The next day, the boy from the spring wished he might have arrows. And that night, the boy from behind the lining asked his father to make a second set. After that, each time the boy was given something, he always wanted one more, a second this, a second that. The father became curious and asked his son why he always wanted two of everything. I have a twin brother, said the boy. Before we were born, an evil woman killed our mother. She threw me behind the teepee lining, and my twin was thrown into a nearby spring. He has lived with the water animals, and evil water creatures. He is like them. The father knew then that the boy from the lining was truly his son, and he wanted his other son. But because the boy was raised by animals and was afraid of the father, the father had to make a plan to capture him. First, the father built a sweat lodge. Then he said to his son from behind the lining, play with your brother as usual, but then grab him, call for me, and I'll come running. That day, while the boys were playing, the boy from behind the lining waited for the right moment. He grabbed his brother and called out, Father, come, I have him. The father rushed to them and held the boy from the spring with all his might. He shouted to the boy from behind the lining, Run, run, start the sweat. He then took the son he was holding into the sweat lodge and held him there. The father poured water upon the hot stones. The lodge filled with steam and grew hotter and hotter. The boy screamed, Father, I am burning. Father, let me go. I'll burn to death. But the father held his son in his arms and would not let go of him. At last, the boy remembered who he was. He realized that he was not a water being. He was not an animal. He remembered that he was a human being. After that, the three lived together. Each day the brothers played 
and the father went out to hunt. The boys were then named, thrown behind the teepee lining and thrown into the spring. One day, thrown into the spring, asked his brother, Where is our mother? Upon learning she was dead, thrown into the spring, said, I can bring her back to life. They gathered up some of her belongings and went to the place where her body was on the scaffold. Thrown into the spring, threw the mother's hatchet into the air and cried out, Mother, be careful, your hatchet might cut you, and her body moved a little. He tossed up her pestle. Mother, your pestle will hit you. She moved a little more. He tossed up her mortar. Mother, your mortar is going to hit you. She moved even more. Lastly, he tossed her comb and cried out, Mother, get up, comb your hair. And with that, she sat up. She had returned to life. When the father returned home that evening, it was a joyous reunion. The mother had prepared food, the lodge fire was burning, and once again they were a family. The mother warned her children of all the evil things that were around and just waiting to harm them. When she told them about a bear who lived in a berry patch, the boys went forth and killed the bear. When she told them about a dangerous cougar, the boys went forth and killed the cougar. When she told him about an elk who had captured the wind, and when he opened his mouth, people flew into it. The boys went forth to kill the elk. But when they got close to the elk, he sucked him in and held him with others he had in his stomach. Thrown into the spring, used his magic knife to stab the elk's heart. He cut the side of the elk open, and all of those who had been captured were released. Tired after all this, the brothers went into a deep sleep. Upon waking, thrown into the spring was nowhere to be seen, no footprints, no signs at all. Thrown behind the teepee lining, shot one of his magic arrows into the sky. He shot another and another. The arrows led him to a place in the sky where there lived old woman, the moon. They heard singing and drumming. The sky people had captured, thrown into the spring, and were planning to kill, then eat him. Thrown behind the teepee lining, pretended he too wanted to join a feast. He and Moon went to the lodge where there was singing. Thrown into the spring was almost dead. He opened his eyes and saw his brother, who had come to save him. Thrown behind the teepee lining, shouted at the leader who was known as the one with a long arm, let go of my brother, or I will destroy you. He showed his power by using a magic arrow to shatter a rock into small pieces. Afraid, Longarm let go of Throne into the spring. Throne behind the teepee lining, gathered up his brother and the two returned to earth. But they were not yet safe, for Longarm wanted his revenge. He reached down to earth and tried to grab Throne into the spring. Thrown into the spring acted quickly, using his magic knife. He cut off the hand of Longarm and tossed the hand into the sky. It can be seen even now, high above the winter sky. Look for the hand in the sky. When you see it, remember the story of the twin brothers, how they had great power and how the sweat lodge can heal those who forget who they are and who they belong to. We are together on a winter night and high in the southern sky. The hand of the evil long arm can be seen sparkling in the cold night sky. It is early evening and we are able to see both of the twin boys. Thrown behind the lining, who is also called Lodge Boy, is the bright planet Venus. Thrown into the spring, called Spring Boy, is the next brightest of the planets, Jupiter. Now comes a science story about the stars that make up the crow constellation of the hand and the two planets known as 
Lodge Boy, and Spring Boy. People all over the world look at the stars. And just as in the daytime you see pictures in the clouds from time to time, it's easy to see pictures in the night sky. Pictures made with stars. In fact, that's what the word constellation means. It's from the old Latin language. Con means with, and stella means star. Constellation. One of the easiest winter constellations to see is Orion. Here we see his head. From this star, across to this bright red star called Betelgeuse, we see his shoulders. These three stars make his waist or belt. And these three stars are his sword. This bright blue star called Rigel is one foot. And just here we see his other foot. But in these same stars, the crow people see a hand in the sky, the left hand of the evil long arm, the hand that Spring Boy tossed into the sky. You too can see the hand. These three stars in a row, they are the wrist. Just here, we see the stars that make up the thumb. We draw a line from here to here and make the tip of the pointer finger, then around to the blue star Rigel for the middle finger. Next you'll see the ring finger. Finally, the little finger where a star is seen as the knuckle, then back to the wrist. About 80 years ago, scientists held a meeting and they decided that every star in the sky should be part of a constellation. They decided that since we have maps of the Earth, they should make a map of the sky. Just like the Earth map, the sky map has an equator. Just like the Earth map, the sky map has lines that go from north to south and from east to west. This map is very useful when scientists want to study a particular star. Just as you can use a map to find your way to a certain house, a scientist can look at a star map and point his or her telescope on an exact point in the sky. A star map is broken into 88 official constellations. These 88 constellation areas hold all the visible and invisible stars and distant galaxies within their boundaries. Now, let's get back to our story and look for Lodge Boy and Spring Boy. Here is our sun, and the first planet from the sun is Mercury. The next is Venus, Lodge Boy. Venus is the brightest of the planets, covered with clouds that easily reflect the sun's light. Then our planet Earth, then Mars, then Jupiter, Spring Boy. Jupiter is made entirely of gas, and is the largest of the eight planets. Its size allows it to reflect so much of the sun's light that Jupiter is the second brightest of the planets. Lodge Boy, Venus, appears early in the morning for a few weeks and then disappears in sun's bright light. It continues to travel around the sun and then appears in the early evening sky. Then again, it disappears into sun's light for a few weeks. And after a time, there it is again, shining in the morning sky. Spring Boy, Jupiter, is almost as bright as Venus. Jupiter, too, travels in its orbit around the sun. We can see Jupiter for long periods of time, sometimes overhead, high in the sky. You can see Venus and Jupiter often traveling the sky together, sometimes closer together, sometimes farther apart, sometimes appearing to move back and forth. They continually revolve, go around, the sun year after year, as does our Earth, so we see them here, then there in the sky, depending on where they are on their paths, and where we are as we travel on our Earth's path. Lodge Boy and Spring Boy are still having adventures, often playing a game of tag in the sky. 
and showing off their wonderful magic powers. The next time you're gazing up at the night sky and someone says, I see Venus or I see Jupiter, you can smile and say, I see Lodge Boy or I see Spring Boy. Like the Crow people, you can remember the story of the twin brothers how Spring Boy learned in the sweat lodge that he was a human boy. You can remember how their father and mother were separated, then all were reunited as a family. A family that will stay together for as long as there is the hand in the sky. As long as we can see the twin brothers, and as long as there are stars in the sky.